Hello and welcome to TechFunnel.com's interview series. My name is Danny White and today we have the opportunity to talk to Ann and Hola Ward. Ann is CEO at Veritoken Global. Dubbed the mother of startups by CNN, Ward is an entrepreneur, futurist, and published O'Reilly author. As the CEO of Veritoken Global, Ward has led the way for updates in blockchain technology, specifically utilizing previously underappreciated technology known as non-fungible tokens, or NTF, or NFTs, to help alleviate global suffering for the unbanked. Anne was named one of Entrepreneur's 27 Top Masters of Marketing that everyone can learn from in 2014, and Top 50 Inspirational Entrepreneurs to Watch in 2017. Welcome, Anne. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Awesome. So what led you to create Very Token Global? So I think it was just a culmination of um, the desire to want, want to work in the blockchain space, but to do so in a powerful way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there were a number of organizations I spoke to, and none of them were really meeting the needs that, that we wanted to achieve. So um it just kind of made sense to start, start our own thing. There was nobody that I I really wanted to join forces with as much as the founding team. So just kind of came together. It was one of those things. (laughs) So there's still so many people um, who are like, what is blockchain? How can it be used? How can it be used for my business, et cetera, et cetera. How are you specifically using blockchain technology differently um, in Bear Token? So I, I get asked that a lot. What is blockchain? What do you do with it? And, and that's a very common question because not everybody kind of understands, you know, the, the model of centralized versus decentralized. And I think that that's, that's fundamental to understanding. But what we're doing differently is we're utilizing non-fungible tokens, which are, we believe, the superior standard of token because they allow us to embed software, security, all sorts of other things, whereas fungible tokens can be swapped. They're not unique. And so it's taking taking the promise of blockchain and executing it in a more meaningful way. That makes sense. Awesome. So speaking of non-fungible tokens, can you explain a little bit to the audience about what that is? Because while, while blockchain technology is still relatively new and growing, um, a lot of people don't know the lingo. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason that a consumer would know what a non-fungible token is. Mm-hmm. Um, so a fungible token is like currency. Um, so like Bitcoin is, is, it's not unique. There's no identifier in there that separates it from another. So you could swap them back and forth. And that's kind of the primary use case today. Non-fungible tokens allow us to encode all of this great information in a meaningful way that uh, that we haven't in the past. So we're able to make it more secure. We're able to, um, you know, embed things so that each one carries with it unique signature. So no one is like the same. They're like a special sm- snowflake. Um, and you can do a lot more with them. Uh, it's harder to implement, but that doesn't mean it's not worth doing. Absolutely. Um, so there is widespread fear of surrounding the entire security of personal data and user and user trust. Um, how do you think blockchain technology can reduce the level of disdain there is among consumers, especially when it comes to different brands um, and the news about all of these security breaches? Um, how do you think blockchain can, technology can help with that? Well, I think you're absolutely right that there's a high level of disdain among consumers. People have given up, they're apathetic. They know they're being taken advantage of and they just don't care enough to make a change because it's not clear to them what the change is. And so I think the fear is going to be there so long as our model is around centralized. Um, The centralized model is essentially where, you know, Google, Facebook, Twitter, a few small players hold the cards. And so decentralizing is really where I think we're going to flip the script such that um, we're going to be allowed to, to kind of make our own path. And so that, that, that switch needs to happen. It's just not there yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I think consumers aren't yet aware of what blockchain even is. 
So to look at a completely different model for everything that they've been doing, the usability isn't there yet either. So I think the usability problem needs to be solved. That's why companies like Samsung putting, you know, a crypto wallet on the 10 Mm -hmm. phone, like that is a huge thing. And, And so we need these big consumer companies to start fixing the usability. And then we're going to start to see consumers go, okay, we do have a choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, because right now you feel powerless when you don't know what else you can do. You just right. know that, you know, you're going to miss out if you don't get on Facebook or Twitter mm-hmm. and you know what your friends are doing. Mm-hmm. And that sort of FOMO is what has kept that in the network effect. So many people are there. And so for the shift to happen means that we have to completely revisit our models. And I think that's only just sort of starting to happen. So it's kind of an exciting time to think about it. It definitely is. So your company um, recently announced an SEC approved security token offering. Um, How does this allow users complete control over their data? So um, the SEC approved token offering was an STO. So I was the first woman to do an SEC approved STO under the 884 standard. Congratulations. uh, Thank you. Which is something I'm extremely proud of. And essentially what what this offering does is it allows us to follow a different set of steps than everybody was in the great ICO craze. Mm-hmm. Such that we're following much more stringent legal accounting standards. I mean, we have spent so much time and energy focused on compliance so that we are able to build a machine that is scalable, but also something that has security and privacy in mind. So that's just the offering itself. It's the product that allows people to have control over their data because we're going to provide a path for people to monetize their data. Mm -hmm. And so we're giving away all of this information to all these big players all day, every day without really any thought. And so we're looking to change that. Uh, And it's not going to happen overnight. But one of the key ways to do that is to help facilitate user adoption of NFTs. And so that's sort of where we're starting. Um, So... Hopefully that makes sense, but I really feel like apathy is our number one enemy right now Mm -hmm. in so many ways. And is that just due to the the newness of blockchain or what is that? What do you think that apathy is stemming from? The apathy is stemming from the acceptance of the fact that if you are not paying for the product, you are the product. Mm -hmm. Most Most people don't seem to care. Right. Um. They don't care that, you know, algorithms are chewing on their baby photos and, you know, making decisions on what ads to show them. Hmm. Um, until that changes, it's going to be hard to see another path forward. But the thing is, you know, what we can do is present an alternative. Mm-hmm. Because if you build that different path, people will see it. And, you know, if you can't visualize it, how can you, how can you change? Right. So it's, it's one step at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So a little bit of a shift here. Um, you used to be focused primarily on search engine optimization and developing websites. What really led you to get into blockchain technology to begin with? Well, so uh, just to back up a hot second, I started out my career as a developer, and that's what led me, my love of analytics or what led me into SEO. Mm-hmm. Um, but my very first quote unquote tech job was as a database administrator. Mm-hmm. I talked my way into it uh, <laughs> at the <laughs> University of Texas and um, they were gracious enough to hire me and I learned a lot on the job. But so, you know, the parallel has been drawn from blockchain to databases. I mean, it's essentially a set of systems. Um, and so it's, it's, a, it's a parallel technology. And so I was always interested in and the idea of, you know, sort of what data looks like, how data interacts, and, and you know, with so much of it unstructured, where do we go from here? What do we do? Mm-hmm. Um, does that make sense? Like, yes, absolutely. I, I, I have always been, I've always been fascinated with the future. I think the most common thread in my career has been uh, that I'm a futurist. Mm-hmm. And I think... I think I see blockchain as the future because of the transparency of it. So I was administering databases as a teenage girl, but now I can, you know, essentially have a public 
public-facing, secure, uncorruptible, you know, public mm-hmm. database. That that's essentially, you know, gross oversimplification, but that's essentially what blockchain can do. I mean, that's something that we didn't even have the power to visualize back then. Right. Um, this is in the early nineties, and so I have always been on the fringe of emerging tech. Mm-hmm. And to me, blockchain is where the most exciting stuff is happening right now. Speaking of most exciting things, you said in a Forbes um, quote, uh, well, a quote that was published in Forbes magazine, that prevention of human trafficking is the most important thing that blockchain can do for the world. Um, Why do you think that is? I fundamentally believe that when technology is not accessible to people, that it becomes limiting to their lives. One seventh of our world's population has been left behind by the traditional systems that you and I get to enjoy every day. Mm-hmm. So there are people who cannot escape poverty. They cannot escape slavery because they can't get a photo ID to get on a plane. Right. They can't get a bank account to get paid in a job. So these people get exploited. Right. These people get exploited and they don't see technology as what it is, which is a way out. And mm-hmm. so I think, um, I think that's who stands to gain the most from all of this, but the usability has to be there. And there's some companies doing great work in the space that we're proud to work with. And so some of what I've been doing is just getting the right players in the room because you would, you would not believe how many people are trying to solve the same problem, but not even talking. Right. <laughs> talking to each other. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Been, been incredible. Um, Okay, so you are definitely a futurist in that, like you said earlier, has been you know a common thread throughout your career. What do you want people to understand about the next decade of emerging technologies? Wow, I think I think I want people to understand that blockchain is a technology that allows users to. Ex- change their digital assets in real time. I think we need to fundamentally understand and accept that some of our assets are, are going to be digital. And mm-hmm. so if you can kind of make the jump in that belief of digital assets and how those work, then think about the possibilities. I mean, we're talking about an internet protocol that mm-hmm. can potentially eliminate or even mitigate trust between counterparties. We can save thousands and thousands of dollars for artists, you know, musicians, for for people to regain trust. Mm -hmm. And so I think people have needed a way to interact uh, and to trust each other. And I think blockchain is the offer of that. And I think that we're going to see a shift in how data is stored, how data is presented. I think think enough smart people in the room are getting together such Mm -hmm. that we can shift this thinking away from apathy and into into more of power, asking questions, reading agreements, saying, mm-hmm. do I really want to consent to this? Um, I think we're just at the dawn of this revolution, and I think it's a really exciting time, and I hope that people can strap themselves in and get excited for it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It's definitely an exciting time. Um, so where can people find out more about Veritoping Global and maybe some more of your insights on blockchain technology? Absolutely. Um, you can find me anywhere on the internet with Anbot, A N N E B O T. I'm Anbot at all the major services, including Anbot.com. Okay. Uh, Veritoken, we're all over Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Veritoken.io is our site. Okay. Um, and we're on all the major social media services, including Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, you know. So uh, in, the, in the age of the internet, we're very easy to reach. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Anne, and for sharing your insights with us. Congratulations again on your STO. That's awesome. Um, We really appreciate your time uh, today. Thank you so much. Guys, thanks for listening to this interview. For these and other interviews and topics, please visit techclonal.com. You can connect with us across social on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram, and subscribe to our weekly newsletter so you can stay up to date on everything that's happening in the industry. Thank you. 